In this unit, we will be talking about the European Union as uh, an actor of foreign and external policy with a particular focus on Southeastern Europe. Um, and I will discuss this in three parts. First of all, I'll outline how the European Union became involved in the enlargement process in the Western Balkans. What are the motivations and the background? Second, I will be looking at the clash between norms and values of the European Union and the interests of the Union and its member states. And finally, in the third section, I will be looking at the rise of geopolitics and other external actors in the Western Balkans to illustrate the role and also the limitations of the European Union. So first, the enlargement of the European Union to the Western Balkans was by no means a foregone conclusion and in fact is still incomplete. It began in the aftermath of the Kosovo War in 1999 which was the intervention of NATO against the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia after it began a campaign of ethnic cleansing against Albanians in Kosovo. So it was a war which triggered European engagement and the offer of membership to the Western Balkans. And this highlights how European enlargement is often driven by fundamental existential crises. So the goal was to achieve peace and stability in the Western Balkans through the offer of integration. And this is quite essential. So these are what seems to be both complementary projects, but also quite different. Stability, peace and enlargement are not necessarily the same. But it meant that this process, even called stabilization and association agreement, so stability is at its core, um, has many elements built into it, which suggest that the process was not just about enlarging the European Union, but dealing with the legacies of war. In the early years, it was the conditionality that the European Union required of the countries to collaborate, to work together with the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, which meant extraditing war criminals or suspected war criminals to the court in The Hague. It also meant that the European Union took over many of the aspects of the international peace mission in Bosnia and Herzegovina. It was often framed as the transition from Dayton, the name of the peace agreement, to Brussels, namely shifting away from a post-war environment to an environment where the country would be able to join the European Union and where peacekeeping and other aspects are supervised by the European Union. And a final example is the dialogue between Serbia and Kosovo, which began in 2011. The idea that Serbia, which had not recognized Kosovo's independence, and Kosovo would find a way to normalize relations because both aspire to join the European Union. Again, you see here how enlargement and the offer of membership is used or thought to be used to uh, transform the countries and resolve open conflicts between them and disputes which linger from the wars of the 1990s. The problem is that this is not a straightforward process. In fact, we have seen that over the two decades this process has been lasting, only Croatia managed to join the European Union. And that is because the enlargement process has become extremely complicated, very long lasting, and it also highlights that just transforming into um, a stable country is not enough to join the European Union. Having a successful state is not the same as being a successful EU member state. So the hurdles are quite high. and This has made it quite difficult for this process to come to a conclusion. And then the challenge has been that the European Union has in many ways lost the enthusiasm for this enlargement in light of multiple crises uh, which Europe has faced since 2008 and which have distracted and uh, removed the Western Balkans from the agenda. But to conclude, you can see how enlargement has a very important role in trying to pursue and implement EU foreign policy, in this case in the Western Balkans, namely to provide for a stable uh, context where war is unimaginable to reoccur.